What's up? Hello. It's Tuesday, July 24th, 2018. I'm Christine Horn and I have Erica Warnick. Hey, I'm so excited to be here. You guys, we're going to give you a second to hop on. Go ahead and hop on. I'm, I'm looking to my right to make sure it's working on my other screen. And it is. So this is like a special edition. It's not just Actors Daily Bread. It's everything. People are hopping on. Let's see. So um, let me hide this. I'm going to take my time. Guys, hop on. Do, do, do us a favor right now. Say hello in the comments. Say yeah. hello, hello, hello. And if you know of another actor, if you're an actor who knows an actor, please hit the share button. Share some love today. You got a double whammy going on here uh, with me and Erica. So let's see. Some comments are coming in. Stephanie from New Jersey says, thumbs up. What's up, Stephanie? Hey, Jasmine. Hey, Kathleen. I see you. Us Asia, hello. Um, uh, let's see. OK, oh, Jason. that's me. My boy Jason is here. Jason Katora from the UK is here. Hi, Katora. Uh, Lindsay. Oh, so you can see these comments too on your end? Well, I've got Facebook open on my other screen. So. Oh, oh well, good. that's good. That's, that's good because my other computer is all the way on my desk. So that's good. You can maybe help if we need to post some things a little bit later. We do have some freebies we're going to tell you about in a little bit. Um, gosh, so many people are hopping on. Sabrina, Sheena, Noah. Oh, uh, Lindsay, hi. Listen, guys, we're, we are really so happy that you're here. Let's do a quick introduction because we are sharing audiences today. So for those of you who are not familiar with either one of us, we will take a moment. Um, I'll start. My name is Christine Horn. Welcome to my tribe that's watching from Hollywood Bound Actors. <laughs> All my Hollywood Bound Actors, give me an HBA in the comments so I know that you're here. And if you're watching the replay, it's okay. What's up? Replay watch. <laughs> Love you guys. So I am a professional actress of 20 plus years, but I'm also a life and career coach for actors. And I am the founder of the number one training Academy for actors called the Booking Magnet Academy. And I am teamed up here with the lovely, with her lovely hat, which I just think is adorable. I think you're so cute today with the hat. <laughs> Introduce yourself and let the world know who you are. Oh man, well, how do I follow that? I mean, Christine Horn, how lucky am I to be here with you today? Oh, I so am Erica Warnick. I am Hollywood success coach, and I work with actors as well, but not just actors. I work with actors, writers, directors, producers, musicians, all artists in Hollywood. I've worked in television for the past 10 years, actually designing graphics for over 30 TV shows. I actually just picked up a show this week. I'm doing a day on Friday. Ooh. And, yes. uh, yeah, and I just, I help people get to that next level. You know, when people are feeling stuck and they feel like everything they're doing isn't working and they are ready to get to that next level and really break through, I am that person for them. So thank you so much for having me here. I'm just stoked. So thank you. Yeah, I love that you're here. I've just, I just put hashtag Hollywood next level um, on the love screen it. because I think, not I think, I know, that's what you and I both do. Um, just so you guys know a little history on me and, and Erica, we met, this is the power of networking and getting out from behind your computer and leaving your house, right? We met on a Saturday afternoon morning at an event with some coaches because we get coached too, okay? Take note <laughs> and, of that, take note of that. <laughs> right, we get coached too and Erica and I did not know each other. I had seen Erica before, I don't think she'd seen me. But I'd, I'd seen some of your ads and things like that before. And I just, we just, we just, I, I don't know if you came up to me first, I came up to you. Next thing I know, we, what happened? You got locked out. She locked yes. herself out of the theater that the event was at. And we had just exchanged phone numbers like five minutes before I got locked out. So you saved me. Like, thank God we exchanged phone numbers. She texted me. I'm like, who's texting me in the middle of this event? And she's like, I'm locked out. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so funny. Let's see, so, okay. So that's our little back history, but to make a long story short, we realized we were both doing something very special um, in the community. And like she said, not I specialize in actors now, she works with everybody as well, but we, ha we realized we had a common union and a common mission of helping people get to their next level, reach their goals. And we, were, we met for tea or lunch one Sunday, and we realized too that our clients were saying a lot of the same things. 
And so we are going to take your questions. Make sure if you're popping on right now, you say hello. If you're with the Hollywood Bound Actors, say HBA. If you're Team Erica, put Team Erica. By the end of this, you're going to be Team Erica and Christine. It's all good. It's all love. So we're both going to, we plan on just kind of, we have some, some things we were going to talk about. Do you have that in front of you, Erica? Yes, I do. You can run down, she, Erica's gonna run down what we've kind of planned on talking about. There are some things that I know she wanted me to touch on that I wanted her to touch on, but um, we are also open to questions. So as, the, as we start talking and questions pop up, throw them in the comments. We'll try to get to as many as we can in the time that we have. And for those, make sure you stick around to the end because we're both gonna give you something juicy and delicious to take home with you. Yeah. So Erica, I'll, I'll hand that over to you. All right, so some things that we're going to touch on, and again, like Christine said, we are, we're going to riff a bit, we're going to take your questions, so we're not so married to this, but we do want to cover, you know, the best actions that you can take while you have an agent. A lot of people feel like they get that agent, and then they have no idea what they need to be doing in addition to trying to hustle on their own side. So we're going to be talking about that, we're going to talk about when is the right time to up level, I think this is a big thing because so many people stay where they are for way too long. I mean, I talk to some people that are like, I have 20 co-stars on my resume. And I'm like, why? Um, <laughs> so talking, why? <laughs> like really understanding when the right time is to up level your career um, and what you do to need to book roles more often. I mean, Christine is the booking magnet. Have you seen her IMDb? I mean, it is <laughs> Baller. So we just want to hear, you know, what is her secret to booking all the time, booking so consistently, you know, how to break through from non-union work to the SAG work, um, so many other things. And, you know, also like what successful people are doing that are different than the people who aren't. I think I need a bigger cup. I know. I drank like almost <laughs> all of mine before we started. Darn it. <laughs> All right. Okay. Hey, Tarnisha, I see you. I think I feel all the love here. Again, this is a, an exclusive, special, special live. So be sure you share it. Some of you are in other Facebook groups. Share it in there too. Let's not be stingy. Let's share the love because you know that's where me and Erica come from. Abundance, abundance, abundance. So let's dive in. Let's dive in. I want to know from you, Erica, we were talking right before we came online and you were starting to tell me about the main thing you see or hear when client, when actors get on the, well, I'll, I'm just, let's say actors just for right now. Um, they get on the phone with you and what were you talking about? The ex, I think the expectation that sometimes is not so realistic or too broad. Like, well, how would you describe it? What you hear on the phone? I would say, and it's interesting because I, what I'm about to say might contrast a little bit with, you know, my general way of doing things because people say, oh, do you manage expectations? And I say, hell no, I want people to reach for the stars. Right. But the thing I hear a lot is, I'll call it the series regular lottery. People <laughs> think that they're gonna hit the series regular lottery and it's going to be like they won the lottery, their life is now changed, they've got money flowing in, doors opening, and their career is set. And it's, I, I, it's not that I want to bring in like a negative spin to it, but I just want to talk about like realistically what happens so that you are more prepared. And then when you hit it and you're in it, you don't feel alone or like an idiot because people aren't talking about it. And so, right. you know, you don't feel prepared. Right. Yeah. And I think um, that was really interesting because I think I hear it too when I get on consultations and it's like, I need to do this in 60 days and this in 90 days. And it's like, so much of that also, Erica, is that a lot of that, what you said, is out of your control. That series regular call is out of totally out of your control. There's so many things you can do to prep, to be ready, to get the craft together. But if that is the only goal, and is that and if that's your only tier of success, because that's my big question too, what does success look like for you? We see people who are half series regulars, but sometimes we gotta be careful. I auditioned for a series regular not too long ago and I was like, oh, thank God I didn't get a call back for that. I didn't want, I, would I wanna do that for seven years? I had to ask myself that. Sometimes we just wanna work so bad, we forget about what that can do to our brand, to our whole career trajectory. I think that is such a good point because one thing that I always say to people when I, when I chat with them on that first call is like, I want you to pursue 
the version of your dream that is yours and not other people's. And mm. it's really easy to get caught up in like, here's how your agent thinks you should be pursuing your dream. Here's what society thinks you should be pursuing. And part right. of it might be taking a role that you don't really want and that isn't connected to your why. Like I know right. serious regulars who quit. You know, and we're like, you know, season three, I'm, I, it was a great experience, but I'm done. I don't want to keep doing this. And mm -hmm. so, like, that is, you know, the reality of it. It's like, I think you want to connect to what that why is for you. What is it that you want? And it's got to be more than the paycheck, more right. than the who's regular, I win the lottery. Right. Absolutely. Um, okay. Where do we go from here? Who's going to start? <laughs> My mom just joined. What's up, mom? <laughs> You love mamas. I'm surprised my mother's not on here. She's probably going to be watching this later. <laughs> um, well, you know what? Since I let's talk booking, and what you know, we were talking off camera. I want to talk a bit about ebbs and flows because a lot of times, even though I call myself the booking magnet, I book a lot. If you've been following me, you know, there have been times where I wasn't booking. Before I became the booking magnet, I was sitting at home with my Broadway credits with zero TV credits and not understanding. I was like, I have an agent. Why aren't they doing more for me? Why am I have all this talent, right? And so there will always, what is guaranteed in this industry, and I know we can all agree, all of you in the thread, is that it, there will always be ebb and flows. Halle Berry has ebb and flows, right? We <laughs> Viola Davis has ebb and flows. They, we may be seeing them right now, like boom, 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 boom. But trust me, honey, there were ebbs and there were flows. And I think not, a lot of times we're not talking about it. And what happens is when you're, when it slows down for you and for slow for you, slow for me is my phone not ringing for a month, which doesn't happen now. But if that were, if my phone didn't ring for a month, I would just be creating something. So anyway, but <laughs> that's number one. I'm not going to sit here and wait that long. But I remember a time where it would be three months or four months. And I have to say, wait a minute, what's happening? But what can happen is, Erica, I think when we get in isolation and we start to think that we're the only ones this is happening to, that's when the inner critic voice gets louder. Maybe you should just throw in the towel. Maybe you're not good enough. Maybe you're too old, too fat, too short, too ugly. You just don't have it, right? All these voices start to come up when I want everyone to understand that this is part of the journey. As your look changes, as you evolve as a human being, some of you, I don't have kids yet, but for people who I know who are parents, being a parent changes you as a human. And so what you start to give off on camera changes. And so understand that that's gonna change and that's when you have to kind of do a self-reflection, do it, in, well, I always say, do an in, take inventory and see what is going on in my life. What was working, that's not working so much anymore. Does that make sense? If you guys under, feel me, put amen in the, in the chat box. I hear you, let me know that we're not talking to ourselves. But okay. I think that's very important. It is part of the journey. And I think it's important also to, Erica, I would say to find things that will always keep you personally invested and busy, being having a strong spiritual practice, having hobbies, having friends, having other things that you do outside of this, this industry, for those of you who are actors, because when it does get quiet, I don't want you to give up and think something's wrong with me, the person. Totally, and I think that why your community and my community, why they're so crucial is because who you surround yourself with, especially during those times, can make or break you. Because right. like, I, like I'm very open about how when I booked my first show, it took me almost a year to get my next one and I got really depressed in between. And so I like I talk to people all day long that tell me they're depressed. And like I get it. You're you're an artist and you're not doing what you love and you have these lulls and you have this downtime and it can lead to like, you know, depression and sadness and it can affect other parts of your life. So you need to surround yourself with people who are going to help you get out of it, not who are going to keep you down there. Ooh, say that. <laughs> you know, if you are surrounding yourself with other actors who are like, yes, you're right. It's so hard. Life sucks. This is never going to happen. That's the wrong circle. That's not right. who you want to be surrounding yourself with. Like I was talking to my friend the other day who's also a coach, an amazing girl. And we were talking about the idea of like, it's okay to have a down day. It's okay if you need to cry it out one day. And like right. I tell my clients, it's like, let the emotions out, feel it. It's what you do after that that matters. And right. so like if I'm 
Oh, I had a down day the other day. What did I do? I got a ticket to a comedy show because I was like, I need to laugh and I need to get out of the house. I went with right. a friend. I called my coach friend who I knew would say something to like shift my perspective. You know, mm -hmm. like I did things that were super productive in getting yeah. me to where I go. And it's really easy to surround yourself with people, especially in Hollywood, who want to oh, drag you back down because they're in it. Right. Yeah, it's what I remember. Um, shout out to Dallas Travers, who was my first coach ever years yeah. ago, back in like 2010. Um, she talked, called that low hanging fruit and, and, and low grade unity. And I think um, it's very imperative, no matter where you are in the world, I know you guys are watching from everywhere, to just be aware of of holding on tight to your to your vision and know that allow yourself to feel. I love that you said that, Erica, because we can try to be like, oh, that's no big deal. It's not a big deal. I remember I did a live months ago for some of my community. You'll remember I was up for a really I was on I was on hold, uh, Erica, pinned for months for a huge network show and finally got released. And I just cried and I took a Took a selfie while I was crying, just to acknowledge that I was having the feeling, and I was transparent and I showed it to my audience. Like, no, I cry too. It hurts my feelings. Yeah, I wanted the job. Yeah, we're not Roma. I'm myself, right, I'm gonna allow myself to have that feeling and then realize I got it's time to move on. Like, feel it, okay, and let's move on. But if I were to pretend like it didn't phase me, I think that's what starts to weigh us down. Trying to act like it doesn't. Yes. You know? Yeah, I was talking to my friend about this. How. Like, cause I preach, I hate to call it positive thinking cause I don't think that I think it's the high achiever mindset, but yes. I believe it is so much more powerful when you truly honestly believe in it than when you are faking it. And I get the whole fake it till you make it thing. But when you're faking it as in trying to not have a breakdown and not cry and not feel your feelings one day because you're trying so hard to fake it, like it's not going to powerfully work for you that way. It's going to be so much powerful when you can let it out and then have the new perspective. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you guys, any any thoughts about that? Um, Pam says, yes to high vibration. Oh. I know, it's coming back. It's just something weird. Um, Grace says, word. Yes, Grace, word. Sasha says, awesome, loving this. So we are glad you're here, Sasha. All right, let's keep it Sasha. moving. Yes. You know, I would love to throw at you, Erica, because I know, uh, like like me, you have some high end coaching offerings, and because they're very high value and they're so hands on, I know anyone who's a client of Erica, she is all in, and that's what we have in common too. Like being so invested in your clients, like I, my. It's weird, isn't it? Like, why am I thinking about your goals? Like, and then if you're not doing them, I'm like, oh, how's that going? Oh my God, I'm not, I called a client yesterday from the car and I was like, listen, you need to do this. I'm trying to almost want to do it for you. <laughs> what we got to do. And she's like, you're right, you're right. You know, I just, like, yes, I care so much, but like, that's fun for me. Right. But t can you talk a bit about, you did a live video, I think last week sometime, and you were talking about not just up leveling in, in terms of roles, but when it's time to up level your career and investing. I wanna talk about the big I word yeah. that a lot of us can be scared of from time to time. I think fear comes up. It's not, it's not always just lack of money, Erica, not in my opinion. I think it's fear not trusting yourself to do the work. It didn't work before. You know, I spent money that one time and nothing happened. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, totally. I, I don't think it's actually ever about the money. Um, you know, it's really always about something else. But I think that it's like you really want to learn when is the right time to invest in your career? And the way that I look at it is, what is this, what am I gonna get out of this? Because a lot of times when people want to do something in their career and they see a big price tag to it, all they see is the number, the price. Mm -hmm. And they completely forget that you're not paying for a price. You might get a transformation. You might get to a new level in your career that you never even dreamed of reaching before. You know, like I was talking to a client the other day and she said that she is now in the mindset of, I'm never gonna be the person that says I can't afford acting class because 
my program and then and now the class has had such an impact on her that she's feeling things that she never felt before. She's doing things in her career that are so far from where she was that that transformation is priceless. And so you really want to think about like, what is, what am I going to get? And people think of like the return on your investment. That's not always financial. Sometimes it's financial. I mean, any role you book after, you know, whatever you invest in is going to be a financial return on your investment. But remember that you can get a right, right return on your investment in so many other ways that right. might be more powerful for you. And think about, someone said this today that I have to repeat again, that I say sometimes to people is what is the cost of not doing it? Woo! Hold on! <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, and, and again, like back to when I said, sometimes people are depressed, like w the cost of not doing it isn't just the thing that you would get, but how is it affecting the rest of your life? How is it affecting your every day? Are you, you know, not going out with friends because you're depressed? Are you not taking the right actions because you're too afraid to like, how is it really affecting you? What is the cost of not doing the thing? And I know it's really easy to get stuck in the mindset of I'm a starving actor. You know, that's what everybody talks about. It's the label that everybody gives. And the thing is that people love to take that that label on because it lets them off the hook as it's, right. It's 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 comfortable. It's but, comfortable. But it's not comfortable. Totally. And look, I'm not saying like that I haven't struggled financially. I mean, of course I have. Like I moved to Hollywood, you know, like of course I have. But it's, <laughs> it's how you and I'm not saying one of my bad days about it, but it's really how you approach it. Because saying that you are the starving actor, first of all, you're perpetuating it. So every time you state it and you're using that language, you are calling it into your life over and over again. Can we can we I have to pause you right there, yeah. Erica? Because the and this is where I know we connect. What we all have to remember, anything that follows I am, anything that follows I am, I think Ayala Van Sant said it once, is a prayer. Yes. Yes. It is a prayer. So that's what you are calling into your life. I am broke. I am starving. I am an aspiring actor. Hey, I cannot take the aspiring. Honey, you are or you are not. I am an actor. Because the more we say I am something, it forces you to keep showing up for that over and over and over again. So if you see yourself saying, I am, and this little, this little twirl, y'all know this. <laughs> hey, she got to act right. So if we, it forces you to step up for yourself. You know, my community, people know, like, I'm, I want to be fluent in Spanish. So if I woke up, if I wake up every day, I'm like, I am fluent in Spanish. But yet I have not spoke to my tutor in months. I have to show up. I have to re, I have to face that every day. And yeah. that you said something. You hit a nail on the head, Erica, by saying it forces you to deal with it. It forces you to accept it as, as truth. It becomes real if you say, oh, wow, now I have to I have to. This is what I am. This right. is what I'm and, for. and then bringing it back to our earlier conversation, you want to win the series regular lottery. How are you going to even do that when you say I am a starving actor? Mm. Yes. Right? How are you going to call in the roles that are paying you? Be like if you wonder, well, that everything you book is unpaid or super low paid. Well, take a look at the, you know, the words that you're putting out and what you're, you know, what you're calling yourself. Right. I think that Ooh. like, what you need to do is take it one step further and say, what can I do about it? If right. I don't like my financial situation, what can I do about it? Because it is really easy to sit there and be like, well, there's nothing I can do about it, Erica. This is just how it is. I have a day job that sucks. And <laughs> I'm going to be an actor, okay? <laughs> I should be an actor. I love it because you're full out with the, you, you uh, know this person. I'm, I mean, come on, I hear it all day long. And I used to be that person. I used to be that person. And some days I am. But... You know, you've got to change that story. As long as you are telling yourself that that is your story, then that's your story. You mentioned something that um, you said something a second ago about questions. And I want to repeat something that I repeat to myself almost every day from another coach, Trevor Ott. Shout out to him, a business coach. But I want to leave you with this, too, as we move, before we move on. You know, Erica just talked about why would it be so, right? And so just remember that you are powerful, right? And powerful people ask powerful questions. Why? Because questions steer focus. And what we know is that in life, in our career, we only get what we focus on. So if you say, do you, do you follow Noah St. John at all, Erica? 
know. I don't know. Formation. So those of you here, um, um, we got <laughs> Alvin said fire. There's just tons of fire on the screen. <laughs> What's up, Alvin? Actually, it is fire because it's like 90 degrees in my apartment look, right now. <laughs> Y'all see, I got the sweat rag. I'm, I'm you know, drenched. Let's be it's honest. 900 <laughs> degrees in California, you, you guys. Oh my this God. is the moment where I really miss Atlanta. This little piece. Hold on. But it would be so humid, wouldn't it? Yeah, it's a whole nother thing. It's, it's, it's <laughs> The grass is always greener. But here's the thing, um, before we move on, you know, we talk about affirmations, speaking about the I am, what I speak into my life, I am whatever. There's a, a guy, his name is Noah St. John. He has tons of stuff out and he talks about affirmations. And so what that means is you say your affirmation, right? I am whatever, right? Whatever you were calling into your life. But just following up with you, Erica, you were talking about asking a question, why? And the question is, why would that be so for you? So if you say, I am a series regular, I am a recurring co-star, okay, why would that be so for you? Well, because I'm investing in coaching with Erica or Christine. I'm taking my acting classes. I'm working out three days a week. I got my goals down. I'm sending out my love notes. I'm doing my marketing. That's why it would be so for me. Like literally standing for yourself, making space for yourself and, uh, and really decreeing what you are going to put out for yourself. And I think Erica, we get, we as people, we as actors, we as humans, Sometimes just get to a place where it's like, because it's just not so laid out, we don't, we haven't put all the answers in place. I feel like we didn't think it all the way through. And I know that's the work you do with your clients too, is that really mapping it out, how it's going to happen. Totally. And I think what you just described of those questions of why would, should that be so is what sets apart the people who are successful from the people who aren't succeeding. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, you guys, let me look at some of these comments. Tony says, see your life not as things currently are, but be excited for all the wonderful things that are possible for you today. You said the word, Tony. Yes. Um, let's see what else is here. Sheena says, what's the cost of not investing in yourself? Man. Yes, yeah, Sheena. Just talk to you today. You have a beautiful voice, Sheena. So good to talk to you on the um, on the phone. Uh, Grace says, yes. People are just giving high fives and amens up here in the chat box, as you can Love see. Erica. We're so glad you're here. If you have a question you want to throw up here in the mix, a question for either me or Erica or both of us, throw it here in the chat box um, and we will get to them. We have our little agenda here, but we are also, please know this isn't just stare at the cute ladies on your screen show. <laughs> <laughs> we do want to hear from you and hear what's on your mind. If you have any pressing questions, um, things you want some, some, I don't know, some clarity on. Um, yeah, that's it. I'm open. I'm trying to maintain this box here. Nice. Oh, Erica, what's next? What are we talking about next? Well, I've got some questions for you. Uh Oh, Uh Oh, uh -oh. So, and, and I love that you already kind of touched on this. So I, I want to hear more about, I mean, obviously I know, I know a little bit because I've talked to you, but for everyone else to hear, you know, you, we talked about the ebbs and flows and you said like for you, of uh, like, it's bad if you have like a month and it used to be like four months and stuff. Tell me your secret about, I mean, I know it's not one little tiny thing, but what can you share to help people book more often? You know, like, and also connected to that is the quantity of auditions related to your bookings? Mm. That's a good one. Um, you know, we often hear in the industry, it's a numbers game, it's a numbers game. And I do agree partly that, yeah, it is a numbers game. It's like, if no one knows you, if you're not out there, if you're not getting in front of people who have the power to hire you, um, yeah, then that kind of is going to take your booking ratio down because you're not out. Um, so as far as booking more often, it definitely starts, and I know y'all don't want to hear it, but I'm going to say it anyway. I, I, it's, it's people's least favorite answer, mindset. It starts up here. When I wasn't booking and when I, when I have had chunk for me, again, month to three months, if things are slow, I'm like, okay, what's going on? Because what I know is my mind is like a light switch. 
It's the light switch in your room. It is on or off. It can't be in the middle, which means that's my vibration. It's positive or it's negative, right? And at any given time, what am I doing for myself? And what am I, how am I channeling this mind? What's my outlook on it? Am I sitting waiting, feeling like, man, I don't have any opportunities? Or am I creating something? Let me tell you, Erica, just by me thinking about how I'm going to market myself or sending a thank you note or being on Actors Access or casting networks or whatever. Anytime I put energy out for myself, I find that all of a sudden emails come in. Oh, there's an audition. Wow. Because I'm putting the energy out for myself. I'm yeah. staying in a positive mindset. Also, I'm doing the work. I stay taping myself. Times when you're, if you're not working, if the bookings have not been coming through, you need to be, there's no excuse for you not to be self-taping multiple times during the week. Too many actors are waiting for the call to now use that audition as their rehearsal. That's not the time to be practicing your self-tape when you have an actual audition. And so working the muscle is another thing too. So the mindset is huge. And I know that's a broad statement, but it really means about Knowing who I am, knowing that I am talented, knowing that I'm confident when I prep, when I prepare, I feel confident. Those of you who suffer from nervousness and anxiety, it comes from your lack of preparation. You may not want to hear that either, but I believe that is true. Oh, you wait to the last minute. Oh, it's due Thursday. Oh, I have a few days or I'll just wait. I have to have to have dinner with my friends and now I'm going to clean the house. And now you don't feel prepared. Now you're anxious and you're nervous. A lot of times it's self-sabotage. We just, we pray for this opportunity and then it shows up and you're like, oh crap. Now they really expect me to do 14 pages due tomorrow? That's LA, first of all. So I stay working the muscle of memory, of powerful, um, of intention, of affirmations, execution. And I stay my number one fan. I stay the, my number one agent. I stay the number one PR person on my team. I have to, in the, every time I put that energy out, Erica, it comes back in different ways. So when I walk in a room, you guys, I give off confidence. I give off, not cockiness, confidence. There's a groundedness in me that's not like, oh God, please pick me, pick, pick, please like me. It's like, no, I'm prepared, I'm here. I know you don't even know what you want right now. I'm here auditioning for wife, 30s, early or early 40s, any ethnicity, short, tall, fat or skinny. Like, I don't know, like you don't know what you want. So I'm not also, Erica, in my head about trying to be right. My job is to do the work, is to present an interesting character, is to be off book, is to fully do the research that I need to do for that network, for that show, being knowing what I'm doing. And I think that is how I, that is definitely how I saw the change. That's the stuff I teach my clients. It's all that stuff. And it feels so tedious to a lot of people, Erica. I don't wanna work on my mindset. Oh, I don't feel like doing this. I'm just gonna wait till I have an audition. Well, then it's too late because now you have the stress of what am I gonna wear? What am I gonna do? I gotta remember all these lines. Oh, I have kids, I have homework. I have to do the dishes. Like, And then all of that is now on you and it affects once again, your mentality. And the little voice comes back here and tells you you're not good enough. You should have did X, Y, and Z and it talks you out of your success over and over again. You know, so much is how you show up. Yes. And it's not just how you show up that one time. It's how you show up to everything. Like, I'm gonna give yes. you an example. I'm wearing perfume. <laughs> I put on perfume. What <laughs> perfume you want for me? My video that there's nobody in my house, no one's gonna smell it, but I'm damn right showing up as Hollywood's leading success coach. I'm gonna yes. show up the best I can, right? Oh, what is your version of that? Like putting on perfume when there's no one here to smell it, you know, yes. it makes me feel good. And it makes me feel like I am, you know, showing up the way I want to show up. Like I always say to people, how you do one thing is how you do everything. And yeah. so sometimes if somebody applies to work with me and they like, don't show up to the call or they show up 10 minutes late, I'm like, like done. Nope. Not going to happen because how you do one thing is how you do everything. Unless it, like, and of course, like unless an emergency happened, but if you're going to be late to your auditions or late to your meetings or just like not showing up, like if you want, you want to be the series regular, you need to show up as the person who's a series regular. Right. I talk to so many people who tell me that their deepest, deepest dreams are like, I want to win an Oscar. And I say, awesome. Are you showing up as the Oscar winner now? 
Yes, you better say that. They're not, they're like nine out of 10 times, they're not. They're scared to do things. They're not stepping outside their comfort zone. They're not showing up the way that you're explaining. And it's like, you want to be an Oscar winner and you're not willing to do the basics here now? What do you think is gonna get you there? You know, I learned that being on set in my early days, my early co-stars, I was the first one to show up and I would see some other co-stars, like they would be like, okay, we need you on set in five or the band's here to pick you up. And they'd be taking their time because they're why they were watching the, the the number one on the call sheet take their time. And like, boo, first of all, you're not number one on the call sheet. Second of all, you need to be the first one down on that set. And as I love that lesson of one of my girlfriends, shout out to Kelly Jenrette. She just got nominated for a guest star uh, on for her Handmaid's Tale episode. Um, yes, I'm so happy for her, um, outstanding guest actress. But we a few years ago, I did a pilot for ABC. And one of the producers worked with her on Grandfather. It was a show with John Stamos. She was their oh, series yeah. on here. And he was like, oh my God, you're friends with Kelly. I was like, yeah, we grew up together in Atlanta. And he was like, man, let me tell you, she was always the first one to set. And that stood out. Now, mind you, she's a series regular. He's talking to me years later, but that stuck in his head. That became what he really remembered. Yes, she's talented, she's pretty, but when you just show up to set on time, they call you, you go. You're ready, you're off book, you're ready. Like you speak about showing up to be an Oscar winner, right? But what do you think gets got Meryl Streep to where she is? It's how we show up time and time again. So I, I think that was really awesome. And ladies, let's keep it real. You know, when you have a date and you put on those cute panties, like the cute ones that no one's gonna see, well maybe later they might see them, you walk different. Yeah. We have that new, that new, like, <laughs> like <everything laughs> like, those new undergarments make us walk different and feel different. And that there's no difference in your auditions when you step in a room. You're undeniable, period. Yeah. I was this Ooh. close to not even putting on real pants because I knew <laughs> I, would, yeah, like, I, I, knew I wasn't going to be seen. But I was like, but I know that I will show up more confident and feel better if I have normal pants on. <laughs> so. Well, I'm, I I'm thank you. It today. It's really what's going on. <laughs> I thank you for wearing pants for me today. I can't speak for your clients, y'all. I don't know how she's showing up to your calls. <laughs> I really <don't. laughs> oh, To all my clients, I always have on pants. <laughs> Let's check this chat box. It is blowing up. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Can you, okay. do, you, do you see some comments you want to read? Oh. So um, my client Hope just wanted to do a follow-up question to what you're saying. She okay. said, so confirm with auditioning, you do believe it's a quantity game. I do believe it is, it's quantity and quality, Hope, because you and I can both get 30 auditions for the same thing. But based on how I show up, how I prepare, how right I am for the role, I might book 10 of those and you might book two or none. So it's not just about numbers, because I know plenty of actors out here getting lots of auditions and they don't book. And so if that happens to be you or someone watching today, that's when it's really time to take inventory. Do I, I always encourage my clients to keep track. Shout out to Sabrina, who's probably on here who with her daughter, Cortland. We were talking today and she was like, I have a spreadsheet. I have the tracking like you taught me, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, it really helps because according to my stat, to my data, she told me, I love, I was like, you better say data and analysis, <laughs> <laughs> talking about acting. She was like, she's been booking 40% of this. Like sometimes we have so many auditions, we just forget and be like, I don't know how many auditions I had. But I think it's very important for you to keep track, whether it's through Evernote or Google Docs or whatever, to be like, wow, how much did I go out this month? And what was my callback ratio? How many things did I get pinned for? Which cast and directors call me back? Because some of you think you're not winning and the same cast and directors called you back four times in a month. They're on your team. They're raving fans. I think I was talking to Pam about that, your client, about having raving fans. So don't confuse the fact that you didn't book that one job as not booking. You booked that room. You won that office. But you can't know that until you look at your stats. So I challenge anyone watching, if it's been a little slow, or even if it hasn't, do some inventory. Do a download of all your auditions and start to see, oh, wow, they, they called me six times in the past four weeks. Yeah. Wow. 
I wonder, do you do this like with your tracking? I'm curious. Do you also have them track like how they felt that day? Just with their energy or their confidence? Actually, no. I that's a very good question. I did not. I've asked that question in general classes. What made you I usually say, what was the last thing you booked? And how did you feel that day? And what could you, you know, maybe what how can we rinse and repeat that? But right. no, I actually don't. That's a good point, Erica. Well, just because talking about like everything you spoke about, about what your secret sauce is to booking, and you said so much of it is your energy and how you show up and feeling confident and feeling prepared. You know, I tell people that I can give you all the strategy in the world, but the energy underneath that strategy is what is really gonna drive it. And if right. you don't have you know, the right energy underneath that strategy, the strategy doesn't mean shit. So, um, you know, so I'm curious, you know, even just for myself, like, you know, on the days, like if you can kind of see any correlation on like, if you're just having a down day or, or, you, or you didn't show up super prepared, like just so you can rem remember like, oh, next time I'm gonna be, as prepared as I can be. Yeah, and I think something important to talk about is resistance, Erica. Um, because sometimes resist when resistance shows up for me, this is what it looks like for me. I get an audition in the mail, well, in the email. It's, if it's not in person, or it is in person. And I just, I look at it, I look at the breakdown, I print it. And instead of telling myself out loud, you don't wanna do that, you're not interested. I'm like, no, I'm gonna get to it. And every time I just like, oh, I'll get to it, oh, I'll do it. And I show up and I leave that audition or I do that tape and I'm like, Ugh, I should have declined it. I got so used to y'all when I was had when I had zero credits, I got used to stacking. I'm like, I'm taking whatever. And yes, I'm not there anymore. And I think it's scary, even if you've only had two or three co-stars, I think so many actors be like, I don't want to turn it down. My agent's gonna think I'm not professional. You have a right to decline an audition. Because if there's resistance, I, the question is, why is there resistance? Sometimes you just don't like the character. Sometimes you, it does. It goes against your beliefs. Like it just, you have to be honest. You don't have to take everything. So I would say if there's resistance, I'd look at that. But then what? what's the consistency roles that I booked? When I've left that room, I'm like, oh, I booked that room. I killed it. Whether I booked that role or not, like it was just, I was fully prepared, Erica. I think it comes down to, to my confidence came from being prepared. Yeah. And, I, and I was like, they may not want me, but they know I, I know I did my job. Yeah. I love what you just said about saying no. I feel like that's a really good topic. Not that we need to talk about it for an hour, but I think that like because people want to get to the next level all the time and they don't realize that saying no is just as powerful as saying yes. And we talk about this a lot with my clients, you, you know, mm -hmm. burning of the ships is what we call it. And it's like it's can be really scary to say no because you're afraid that other, um, you know, other opportunities won't come or they'll start drying up or something. But as long as you keep saying yes to the things that you no longer want, they're going to keep coming and you're going to stay where you are. So mm -hmm. I think learning to say no can be just as powerful as saying yes when you're really looking to get to that next level. I agree because I believe you have to make room. It's like having a, a full closet and you keep trying to buy more clothes and you got nowhere to fit those new clothes, like, boo, get rid of some of those old clothes. Like, those clothes were cool for that time, but yeah. you got to make room for the new. And that's, you know, I talk a lot to my clients about graduation. And sometimes you have to graduate yourself and allow yourself, give yourself permission to graduate. Like, okay, I only had two lines in the past three projects. I'm ready to graduate. You know, I can say no to that. I got those. You right. don't have to cop number one four times in a row. Right. Or like that dude I talked to who had 20 co-star credits. And then you wonder why you're not moving up. Well, like you're the one that's saying yes to these things and you can yeah. choose to say no. And I know that it's scary, but you have to have an abundant mindset where you believe there are an abundance of opportunities that are going to come your way when you choose to up level. Yeah, you're making space. And, and lastly, before we move on, because I see the chat box blowing up is yeah. Also understand, guys, you have to train, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way at all. I talk about this all the time, training, casting, how to see you. If all you, if let's say it's okay, you you were just doing co-stars for the past two years, three years, and you're ready to, you start training them by declining. You start training them in how you're putting your marketing materials out, being very clear of what looks we're presenting. I think one of your clients, Pam, was like, I have a bunch of looks. I'm like, well, can we narrow it down to two and, tr and throw those out? 
like a freaking McDonald's commercial. Every time we see Pam, it's, it's one of these looks. It's one of these looks. And we start to get to know, oh, this is what we need. And well, I want one of these looks today. Totally. All it's right. The same thing that I went through even just trying to get design jobs. Because when you're a PA, people see you as a PA, you have to train them of how you want to be seen. You know? Right. You have to tell them you're a designer. Let us look in this. Oh, the comments are blowing up. I think someone asked, I think it was Lindsay, is this going to be available later? Yes, you will be able to watch the replay. Good, we're going to do a replay. We'll watch the replay. The replay, will, it will just be here. Exactly where wherever you're watching it now, that's where you can hit play again, unless someone deletes it. Um... There's so many, um, we can go back and forth. I don't I wanna make sure you guys know that we see you, we see you, we see all your comments. And I knew this was gonna be a long, I was like, there's no way we're gonna do this in 30 minutes. Ah! I was supposed to have a client, Sheena, who's in the chat, I was supposed to talk to her at five. Oh and crap, I, was, I, didn't, I wasn't even no, looking no, at we, No, we spoke no, earlier, cause I was like, I already know. Me and Erica are gonna, 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 gonna get on talk here and talk. <laughs> um, Mistel, Mistel, Megan Kathleen says, Oh, I think that's, she's responding to someone privately. Uh, Sasha says, you look amazing. Pam, you both rock. Oh, thank you. Um, Hope says, keeping track. She likes that idea. Um, Jordan Flowers says, you spoke about having something to do when you're not acting slash working. How do you do that without losing focus? Erica, you wanna take that? Having something to do when you're not acting? Um, well, I was talking, I think I was talking earlier about having a life, basically, not oh. being all consumed in this life, because it will, it can drive you nuts. You, that, I think there has to be a balance of, if because that was me years ago, back in 2010, 2011, when I was here in LA, not knowing what the heck I was doing, no bookings, had an agent who never called me, nor did I call them, because I was scared. <laughs> I had no TV credits, I wasn't going out, and I would just sit up every day like, what was that pinky, like pinky in the brain? Like, what are we doing today, pinky? Like trying to take over the world. Like every day it was just like, what am I doing for myself? I have no idea. My unemployment's dwindling. I'm scared, fear, doubt, worry. Like all that stuff just starts to come back. Yeah. So I think it's important to have just a life. I think is Jordan's what I'm saying, finding balance. Because as far as I'm concerned, I'm gonna be like Cicely Tyson, honey. I'm gonna be there 90 years old. I'm here. Yeah. But so I know that means I have to balance my marriage. I have to take care of my dog. I have to meditate, go for walks, go on vacations. Some actors were so scared to book a trip. What if they call? Well, what if they call? You can tape it or you can book out. We can't live our lives. And I, I'm, I really think that really, wow, that really made me emotional right now because I know we don't want to miss an opportunity. And if we've taken the time to invest in you, like someone like you or me, Erica, we're investing money, time, and energy, and then an opportunity comes, we don't want to miss it. And we walk around as actors like, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss it, which causes all this anxiety. Our house is in shambles, not in order. And we look to the wayside and realize relationships have gone to the wayside. We haven't invested in our friends. We haven't just gone out to dinner. So there's this underlining anxiety that carries us every single day. Do you have I'm, any thoughts about that? I mean, I'm just learning this for myself. I mean, it's because I haven't been that person. I'll be honest. You know, like I am the workaholic. I am the person that wakes up every day and says, what can I do today to succeed? What can I do to, you know, to make this happen? And, you know, now in my 30s, I'm finally learning and desiring that balance. And I think, I think even especially for an actor or somebody who creates, yeah. um, what are you going to draw from? <laughs> right. You know, you need to go out there and live your life so you have something to draw from um, and so that it becomes, you know, more than just this. So for sure. So I think, you know, what I always tell my people is, you know, when they're like, well, like how many hours a day do I need to work? I say it's not necessarily about the quantity of hours. It's what you're doing with them. So it's right. not like you have to wake up every day and spend 15 hours on your career. It's like if you can answer that question of what can I do today to move my career forward? Do the one thing that's going to move the needle the most and then go out and live your life. You know, it's not necessarily about grinding all the time. It's yeah. especially the energy piece. Like for the energy piece, you need to not be hustling hardcore all the time. Yeah, I agree. Because then you start to resent it. 
Yeah. You start to resent it. You're like, I worked 50 hours last week. None of this stuff worked out. You'd be like, well, you know, it's like sometimes you got to work smarter, not harder. You know, and also it's that Parkinson's law thing. Like things will say, things will take yeah. as long as you say they will. So like you can, you can have an hour of power, turn off the phone, turn off Facebook and just go in with your research, make a phone call, write a press release, do something. I tell my clients, a lot of my clients have kids. I'm like, if the only alone time you have is in the bathroom on the toilet, well, honey, bring your notebook. And that's the only time no one's going to bother you. Well, then you got 30 minutes. Do whatever you need to do. You know, you can find it. But I think that balance, you know, my mission is really to make sure you guys can love your life too. The career and the life, they have to go hand in hand. We see stories all the time about people committing suicide and having all kinds of mental health issues because this career literally drove them nuts. Yeah. And you didn't have a way to have an outlet, find therapy, counseling, you know, have a coach like one of us that we can, you can work through stuff. Totally. Um, and like, like my clients will say to me, oh my God, like I never had so much free time before because I have them focusing on the thing that matters the most instead of all the other things that aren't really moving them forward. You know what well, I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Good question, Jordan. I hope that gave you some clarity. Um, let's see here. Grace says, thank you. You're welcome, Grace. Sasha says, speaking on booking the room, do you think about that before entering the room? on how to make sure they remember you? Um, if you mean like, well, first of all, Sasha, I have, you know, I talk about, um, <laughs> I have like a my method, you know, of just going through the day prepping. From the moment I'm getting in the car, I, call, I play what I call my booking playlist. So I go to YouTube and just select, make a playlist. So songs that pump me up, they're gonna get me going. If it's that kind of audition, or if it's more somber, I have my focus songs. So it's just an energy of preparation. I don't stand there right by the door like, all right, I'm going I'm to kill it. I'm going to go. <laughs> no, like, that's not what I personally do. I know that every step I've taken prior to standing there waiting for my name to be called is going to do that for me. That preparation. Yeah. Let's see. You take some questions. I feel like I've been talking for a I month on Sundays. Oh, I can only see, like, the... Because on Facebook, it's only showing me like the most recent four comments. Yeah, you have to change it to um, the little drop down box to real time comments. Oh. Yeah, Facebook does that thing. I don't know why they think some are more relevant than others. But if I you change know. It to I'm not, I don't even have that option here on my page. Let's see. I'll, let's see. Um, Grace says, How do you sign with a good theatrical agent? Grace, that's a broad question that I can't get to today. Um, you also asked another question. I'm always self-submitting, which is fine, but all my bookings are low budget self-submission. Grace, are you in the Hollywood Bound Actress Facebook group? If you're not, somebody please put that in the comments for her, one of my HBM members. I have a ton of, I have a show called Actors Daily Bread, Grace, and right now we're in episode 138. There's 138 episodes you can binge on, which will help you with some of these questions. Um, which would be a really wonderful resource to you or anyone else. So if one of my HBA members can just put the link to Hollywood Bound Actors in the group um, and catch up on some Actors Daily Bread. You can even click my name and click on videos and you'll, you can just, honey, you can just, it's going to be you and me for, for the next four days. Um, Mistel says, oh, she was talking about the hobbies. Hope says that's what you, she was dealing with right now. Oh, Hope, what did you mean? What were you dealing with? Um, let's see, Justin. Justin, this is a new one. Um, Justin says, that's where I am right now. I'm going to get my head on straight and come back in August and hit the ground running, getting that damn agent once and for all. I got that's four. Good. I so, got four. Oh, I'm sorry. What were you saying, Erica? Sorry, Justin was one of my clients. <laughs> oh, God. He says, I got four films in post production and got so much material to show up. Got to take care of yourself. Absolutely. I'm calling um, Justin out to give you some tough love. Obviously, I don't know everything and where you're at, but you should be looking for an agent ages ago. You were ready ages ago, so stop self-sabotaging. Stop letting the fear get the best of you and just freaking do it. You have been, you were, you've been ready for a long ass time. Woo! Time for you to get- Oh yeah! <laughs> First of all, Erica, the fact that you call that your client, 
on this live broadcast makes me not feel bad to all mine. I'm not the only one. That's I, it. He knows Justin I love him. We're, we're close. I love, I love Justin. Just, I, I mean, I, I'm close with all my people. They're my people, you know? No, that was, I know that was sent in love. I feel your energy through the computer. I'm laughing because sometimes I call my people out and they'd be like, why are you calling me out? It's like, well, because I want your dream to happen so badly <laughs> that you need to do this to make it happen. And I'm going to make sure your dreams <laughs> gonna happen if you don't do this. Yes. <laughs> I love it. You know, guys, we really, we get so invested. Um, Lakeisha says, bathroom alone time. Yes. Hey, <laughs> get it how you can get it. TC Rose says, mindset is everything. Focusing on you is important. Me time is everything. Yes, honey, I even have me time in my Google calendar. Yeah. Because my clients have access to my calendar. And if I don't block it off, I'd be like, why well, I got a session at 8 o'clock p.m.? Like, that's, you didn't block it off. Um, let's see if you have any new ones. It's just people talking to each other. Okay, Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia. What's the best way to decide which agent is right when there's so many to choose from in this big city? Erica, <laughs> you want to take that? I could talk for hours about this. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the short version of kind of what I do with my class. I'm sure you do something different, but like, first of all, what, like my clients come up, we, we have this thing called the clear intentions list. They come up with their clear intentions of what their intentions are for their agent. And that is what you use to narrow it down. When you're able to get meetings, you, you are interviewing the agent just as much as they are interviewing you. And you don't want to come at it with a desperate energy of like, I just need an agent. I'll just say yes to anyone. You want to go in there knowing what it is you're looking for. And a lot of times people know what they're looking for because of the contrast they got from their other shitty reps in the past, right? <laughs> so you wanna be super clear going into it with what you want, what you're looking for and ask them questions. Like my clients come up with amazing questions to ask them to see how their process is and what their successful clients are doing and you know, really understanding like how do you like to communicate and you know, take that clear intentions list and use that to narrow it down. I always say like start broad because you might zoom in and get really strategic on your search and get 20 no's from 20 people you thought were great for you. And then what do you do? So if you go broader in your search, but use the clear intentions list to narrow it down, it'll make sure that you're never saying yes to someone that isn't a good fit for you. Right. And that, that research, I know we're not talking too much about it because this is a, this is a rabbit hole conversation. <laughs> uh, <certainly>. <laughs> <laughs> But also for all any of you who are in search, it is remember it's a partnership. It is, it is like a marriage. I have been with my Atlanta agent for over twenty years. My team here I've been with for several years. And when you, when I was taking meetings, when I moved back here, it was like there were some people. I was like, oh no, we don't click. Like I just don't like you. Like that's not gonna work. <laughs> I don't think you like me. Like you may see dollar signs looking at me, but this. Like this is, it's a partnership and no too, as you, as you're researching people and you take meetings and things like that, I, you should have a feeling of comfort. There should be excitement, but there should be comfort because if you don't feel comfortable that you could pick up the phone and call your agent or email them or text them, whatever their best mode of communication is. I mean, everybody has that. How is a relationship going to work? You know what I mean? This is for the long haul. You're going to, how are you going to be able to advocate for yourself and speak up when you don't feel like things are working? You know what I mean? So there are so many, and sometimes to be, I can't I forget who asked that question. Sometimes it is really like throwing spaghetti at a wall. You know, you may have done your intention and you, they look good on paper. And then you get to the meeting and it's like, oh, this, the last five meetings haven't been good. That's sometimes it just is that. We don't know. It's like picking a doctor, a primary care physician. Like, I'm just looking at stuff on the computer, looking at the reviews, hope it's good. You know, it's like. Yeah. And what, um, like, you know, what review might be like terrible for another person might work for you. You know, I think so much of it, too, is like a gut feeling like energetically. How do you feel when you're there? And that's why I hate when people are just like, well, how do I get CAA? Because you like what like the agent that's gonna feel good for you might not feel good for someone else like just worry about yourself right cynthia says what's the clear intentions list i think you've talked in it briefly just can you just yeah i, mean, I don't want to dive in too much because we do it i do it with my one-on-one -on -one clients um so you can hit me up and we can talk about it but in a very brief sense it's just what are your clear intentions your, for your goals goals. right because you have to know what kind of agency, you know, if you're, if you have no co-star credits at all, don't be trying to get signed to, you know, Abrams or 
you know, innovative, you know, and you have to have some other options. Know why you're, who you're reaching out to and why, and how you could grow, possibly grow with that agency. Girl, we have been out here like an hour. Oh my God. I knew what happened. We're going to take a couple more questions. First and of all, we got to take a few more questions, but if you have a few more, a couple of questions, we're going to take about two more questions. But before we do that, Erica and I both have some treats for you. Um, we figure between our two audiences, some of you have had it, some of you had it, hadn't. Um, are you able to type in the chat in the chat box on Facebook, Erica? Yeah. So what are you going to share with the audience today? Um, man, so many opportunities. What do I want to do? I, it's I like, I know if, if you follow me on Instagram, I actually have one of my highlight covers says free stuff and there's a bunch of stuff in there. Um, but I think based on this conversation, I have an audio that you can download that goes deeper into how to up level your career and what you really need to do to up level. Um, so if you want to grab that, I'll type it in the chat box. You can go to, I think it's, uh, bit.ly forward slash Hollywood up level. Up, up. Yeah. <laughs> test it out. Test that link out. I, I know. Let's test, let's type it and see if that works. Yeah. Um, do you need me to type yours? Yeah. Um, so what I'm giving away is um, some of you, some of, most of my audience has done it, but if you're new to me, um, I have something called the Booking Magnet Challenge and hundreds of actors have already taken it. And if you haven't, you should totally do it. It's a five day challenge on me sharing my success oh, tips. And how see if that works. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. Oh, well, don't. If you type in Booking Magnet Challenge, mine is going to autoplay too. Your <laughs> face is so cute. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> but did it work? It, your link worked? Yeah, my link worked. <laughs> okay, awesome. Somebody type in the comment box. We, uh, okay. we see the link. Um, so that you let us know you got Erica's link. I see oh, it. Yeah, I, see I wasn't it able here. to like pin it to the top because I'm not the person that's doing it. But and I can't do it too either because I'm my other computer's over there. But it's you know once this is done, Erica, yeah. I should be able to edit the post I think and put it there again. But otherwise, here it's in the comments. She put it in the comments. Just scroll the comments and get her delicious freebie. I, I'm sure I probably listened to that myself. So for me, if you want to get the booking magnet challenge, David, you just getting on here? You an hour late. <laughs> You, um, all in out people left and right between the two. Okay. <laughs> I sure did, did not. It's okay, replay oh. watchers. Um, Erica, if you could type in for me bookingmagnetchallenge.com, yep. that is um mine, and so that's a totally free, no cost five day challenge. I know Pam just took it, but hundreds of actors have taken it. And basically each day I walk you through a challenge to book more work, things to do. Me and Erica really are very similar in like goal setting and getting clear on what it is you're trying to do. Our careers are like houses. Like if you just start laying bricks by what you build and I don't know, well, why you laying <laughs> bricks? But I don't know. Eventually you'll turn to something like that's how we approach our careers. We need a game plan. We need a blueprint. How many bathrooms? How many bedrooms? Like, what is it that you want? You got to start seeing it. That vision has, has to come so clear. So um, awesome. Um, booking magnet challenge. Yeah, that's mine. Um, you might have to put an HTTP. You can just copy it. Not sure. It's so those are applicable. So those are our two um resources for you guys. Don't let this opportunity slip by to not take advantage of these two things. Both Erica and I have uh, some great resources and also we do some amazing coaching if we do say so ourselves. Um, so the opportunity to even get a, a no cost training is invaluable and make sure you just actually implement what you learn and hear. You know, so many times we get, so many times we download free stuff and never open the email or, you know what I mean? So how you show up, remember. Exactly, exactly. So I'm going to take a few more questions. I see you guys saying you got the link. Awesome. Um, Keandra posted it. Great, great, great. Um, there's so many questions, so I'm just going to have to kind of just pick two. We've been on here way longer than we anticipated. And thank you guys for rocking with us. Yes. The number one show on Facebook tonight. Uh, yes. Thank you, everyone, for being here. This has been yeah. amazing. And I'll be sure to post this on YouTube and that way it can be, it can just keep sharing. Um, Lindsay says, you can see the link, you can't click it. 
Lindsay, are you talking about the magnet challenge or Erica's link? I was able to click both, but let me try with the I want to make sure folks get it. That's so tiny. Yeah, I can't write any comments. Okay, um, let me scroll through these comments. Why is it so tiny for my eyes, Lord? I can't see any questions. I have some. It's just the screen scrolls. I, so I see some hearts. Oh, I love the hearts. Thank you, guys. That's awesome. Oh, see, thank you. See, I can't see the love from here because I'm on another platform. Um, Technology. They say thank you for the freebies. You're welcome. We love you guys. Hope says so she opened them both. I saw a question. Please bear with me, guys. This comments go so fast on the thing. Um, people. Some people are just taking notes. I'm just looking for questions. Sheena says, let me see this one. Christine, are you all going to be able to cover ways to break into Sagros? Wait, Caroline, I don't, I don't have, unfortunately, I don't have time for that today because we do need to wrap in the next five minutes. Um, I think the short answer to if you're doing non-union, trying to become union, keep doing non-union work, keep doing non-union work, keep doing work, keep showing up, do short films, do student films, write your own projects. Um, do industrials, anything that gets you on camera, keep doing it because eventually you become, and if you're in the Southeast, it's a right to work state, there's gonna be a lot of union opportunities. So it really just takes you becoming, getting one of those union jobs and then you can end up, end up getting tapped hardly. But I'm not gonna pretend to be the, um, I'm a proud SAG after member, but I'm not gonna pretend to be the, know all about stuff about membership. So please contact your local SAG after office to get more clarity on how many vouchers and all that stuff you need to join. But um, I say just keep doing the work, you know, and let stop worrying so much about is it now union? How much is it paying me? Like not in the beginning. If you're just trying to build your resume, you need that experience. Um, do you have? Um, let's see. Oh, Lin Lindsay was talking about fear. Okay, I don't see any direct, just direct questions. I know we covered so much tonight. Um, the comments have been out of this world, amazing. We're so glad that you're here. In closing, um, and, and if, as you watch the replay, guys, make sure you, um, you'll be able to connect with Erica and me. Just click any of our names. We'll um, put all that in there. We're both on Instagram and all that stuff. Um, what do we want to, what do what should we leave our, our, I mean, I'd be hate to leave you, but I mean, I know, but I want to, you know, leave you with, and we talked about a lot of realities, you know, but even though we talked about that, I know for sure you and I both are both visionaries and keep reaching, keep pushing, but I don't want anyone to think it comes with, oh, it's just, you know, I'm here now. I mean, that's what I did to be honest when I moved here. I finished doing The Lion King. I did The Lion King for five years. And after um, I, the Las Vegas company closed, I literally drove here from Las Vegas. Like, I'm here, Hollywood. I'm here. <laughs> and so many people do. You may be laughing, but even if you live in Atlanta or New York or Miami, you have a Hollywood dream. You've got a burning oh. belly. You've got a burning your belly. That's why a lot of times I talk about what does it mean to be Hollywood bound? It doesn't mean you have to be here. It's a mentality. It goes back to the mindset. But Erica, I came here like, yes, I'm here. Don't y'all know me? I'm Christine Horn. Yes. And when it was crickets, I didn't know what to do with that, Erica. Like no one prepped me for a wait, but I'm talented. But no, listen, I'm here. Right. And, and so our goal as coaches is just to really help you get clear on where your starting point is and truly understanding that this is your life by design. You can choose to wait and get discovered. If that's your game plan, I wish you the best of luck. But know that it takes strategy. That's how I've gotten my career to where it is. That's how Erica has gotten hers to where it is. And that's, yep. the stuff we, that's the stuff we help with. So just know that if you're feeling frustrated, I'm gonna close with this. If you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling paralyzed or whatever that is going on up here, because I bet it's all up here. 
it's time to step back and think, wow, I may need some strategy. And if you're not able to come up with that strategy on your own, it may be time for you to seek help, making sure that strategy gets help implemented and, and created for you. Yeah, and I, I, just to tack you know, on. Yeah, please, I was gonna come to you for your closing words. Like, reach out to one of us, because I think the, the one thing that Christine and I both do that is different than what you will get anywhere else is the customization because we understand that there are no formulas in Hollywood. And I understand there are programs out there of, you know, get an agent in eight weeks or whatever. And <laughs> just have you do one formula and it might work for your friend and it might not work for you. And then you leave it feeling like crap. Christine and I don't work that way. No. Like we, we tailor it to the individual and we understand like the end game. Like we want to help you get the end game regardless of whether or not you try one marketing technique and it works or not. Right. So reach out to one of us, you know, if you're looking to get some coaching, come work with one of us. Like, I hope you get this, but like, we really care about our clients. We care about you succeeding. We're, our vision is your vision. Absolutely. And, you know, so like step up your game and reach out to us, come work with one of us. Um, I think, you know, it's going to be what sets you apart and really helps you get to that next level, you know, a lot faster than if you were just trying to figure everything out on your own. I totally agree. I say, I always call it skip the line. Like yes. you, can, I, you can let me help you skip the line or, you know, um, Britlin says, I'm feeling paralyzed. Well, you can expand on that in the chat box. And if you want, I can uh, see what you're talking about um, once we sign off of here. Um, I, I'm gonna go, we're gonna go, but I have to say one oh. more thing. I often tell people, you're not stuck, you're stubborn. And it doesn't always land with people well, but here's what I mean. And I'm bringing it up too because of sometimes we feel a certain way, but that feeling is not a fact, yes. right? So we may feel stuck, right? Some people say, you know, Jim Rohn always talks about, you're not a tree, you can move. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? And so sometimes you may feel stuck. I don't know. What to, I, I Sometimes I feel stuck in my entrepreneur business. When I have a boatload of things on my to-do list, right, Erica? I have tons of calls to make, websites to update, and I just don't feel like it or I feel stuck. And it's like there, there's something in the middle of that. There's resistance. There's fear. There's something preventing you to get to the other side. Because you may say I'm stuck, but then you have a coach like Erica or me who says do, do one, two, and three. Make these phone calls. Make sure you do that. Oh, I feel stuck. No. What's the real reason? There's a real reason you haven't gotten to the other side. Listen, I know what it's like to have a nine to five. Erica used to do full, you know, graphics. Full time. Like we know what it's like to balance a career, a job, a J-O-B with what maybe you really want to do. And it starts with choices. It starts with one word, decision. The decision to invest in a coach, the decision to say, today I'm doing something different. Maybe my money's tight, but I can at least still do blank. There's no excuse that I can't. Do something for myself. David Nagel, he's a financial coach. He says, when you make an excuse, any excuse will do. So, so think about the excuses that you're making for not being where you want to be. I can't answer that for you. Erica can't answer that for you. But we love you this whole thread. We stayed on here for an hour and 15 minutes for free talking to y'all. We love you. We want to hear from you. We're so glad. I'm so glad we did this, Erica. Yeah, me too. Um, and I know clearly you can see we could do this for hours, but we're not because we it's 800 degrees in Los Angeles and we're sweating. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so if you found this live helpful, share it. You know, maybe you didn't have a chance to share it before we came on. Play it back. Watch the whole thing. Reach out to both of us. If one of us, just reach out. Get the help that you need. Erica, stay here when I'm going to hit end, but make sure you stay so we can chat offline. Thank you guys the rest so of you, much. Good night. We love you and stay inspired and do the work. Bye.